Definitely throughout the month of April, the garden has absolutely flourished. And I am so excited to share with you today what the garden is looking like. Today is the 29th of April and the garden behind me has just changed so much over the last three months. So I wanted to do a little bit of a garden walkthrough with you all to share with you what the garden is looking like. I'll share a few things that I'm harvesting, some things that are flowering in the garden, what I'm planting at the moment, and give you a general overview of what everything is looking like in autumn. So I really hope you enjoy today's garden tour. I thought I would start here at the top of the garden and give you a little bit of an overview of what it is looking like. This is our zone one permaculture patch, meaning that it's right next to the house. So this is things that we like to look at and enjoy every day. And I thought I would share with you what we've been harvesting at the moment from this garden. And the first is this corn. I've only picked a few cobs so far, but I had kind of mixed results with this corn because of all of that rain that we had. Just, it was so intense, the peak time of when the corn was um, needing to be pollinated. But you can see now all of this here, the silks have dried off. So this is a perfect time to pick the corn. And I think Scott and I might pick some this afternoon. So I'll share with you what that looks like. Um, the pollination was just a little bit patchy. Um, it didn't reach the whole cob because all of the silks weren't pollinated, but still fairly good in my opinion. And next to those, we've been enjoying the cosmos that have started to come out in flower. I've actually planted some tulip bulbs around in here and had to put some um, mesh wire over it just so the bandicoot doesn't dig them up but I'm not too sure how they'll go because it's quite moist in this garden bed. And then this is all of the snapdragons that I planted and the row of poppies, lambs here, loving life as it always does. <laughs> but in here, what we've also been harvesting throughout the whole garden really is we've been picking some herbs and a lot of kale. The kale's been doing really well and I've planted an abundance of it throughout the garden um, because a lot of it was getting severely eaten by the cabbage moth, um, a butterfly, the little grubs, the green grubs. But we have planted a lot so that we have an abundance for both us and all of the bugs around us. So I've been enjoying this. This is my favorite type of kale. It's a uh, blue dwarf kale. It's really, really delicious. I like that the leaves aren't too big as well. And they're also just really tender when you cook them. I've also got a row of beans behind them. I've been picking these. These are a bolotti bush bean, meaning that usually you would dry the beans and um, use them in cooking. Some of these are going a little bit too far now but I have been actually liking picking them when they're a little bit younger um, so they're not as tough and just eating them as green beans. These ones here are a little bit big I can start to feel the beans forming so I will save some for dried beans but generally around this size is what I've been liking. And my gorgeous little row of basil here is finally doing a little bit better. It just really didn't like all of that rain. It was just suffering a lot, but it is loving these sunny days. So I'm going to come along pretty soon and just pinch a lot of these. Pinching the top of a lot of plants like basil will mean that you get an overall bushier plant. So you can see in there that there's actually some side shoots coming off the side. If I pinch this here, 
like I'm going to right now, I can put this into my pasta, but this is also going to branch out and give the plant a little bit more strength. It's not gonna grow just straight up um, and give me a lot more basil, which is what I like. And I've also been filling in the gaps with some flowers as well. So I've planted some nigella in here. You can see four little tiny seedlings um, along with some rubbish that has blown around. I need to pick that up, but I'm hoping that this is actually going to be a really gorgeous perennial uh, herb and flower bed eventually. I would love a rose bush in here. Um, so I'm just kind of keeping my eye out on what rose bushes I like. Winter is a really good time to plant your roses when they're dormant. So I am going to be keeping my eye out and um, having a look around at what takes my fancy. But if you have any good recommendations for cottage style rose bushes, definitely let me know because I'd love to know what grows well in like a Sydney kind of temperate climate. This basil smells so good. I'm gonna need to put it down because I keep getting distracted. <laughs> Moving on to the bed um, next to the corn. This has really taken off lately. And you can see, don't mind the dogs. Um, I am kind of struggling with the cabbage moth butterfly, all of those holes. It's a little annoying, but I have been picking them off and I think we are getting some colder days soon. So hopefully they won't be too much more of a problem. I have filled in this whole area jam-packed with plants pretty much. There are so many flowers that I have sown in here and they're all tiny little seedlings like a lot of these. So I have planted things like nemesia, calendula, poppies, chrysanthemums, linaria. What else have I got in here? Oh, I have all of those. I have all of those zinnias that you can see over there next to the, next to the strawberries. Um, and then behind the zinnias, you can see I have my rows of onions back there. I have greens planted, my gorgeous silver beet. This is a orange silver beet, although it kind of looks yellow to me, but oh my goodness, the color on this is just absolutely stunning. And if you are, if, and if you're ever interested in seeds, I always give a link in the description box of where my favorites are to buy seeds, um, particularly from Whitbird Environmental, who I work with. Jeff has just such a great, um, Jeff has a great range of different seeds and he's an Australian small business. So I always recommend um, Australian small businesses. If you're interested in buying some seeds, and then my strawberries here are just multiplying pretty much on the daily. <laughs> They're just going crazy. I planted just three plants in here and I have so many more new little baby plants that have um, grown from the runners. So strawberry, so with strawberries, they send out these runners, these things here. And then along those runners, they um, start new plants pretty much. So you can take those up and divide them or you can just let them ramble around like I have to fill in this whole area. And hopefully in spring and summer, we will have some strawberries from this patch. You're going to have to wait till next month to see the display of zinnias because they're all starting to bud up and they're just about to flower. These ones are going to be, I think either a purple or orange, I think purple though. There's a few really sad ones here though. So um, I've got some, I've got a peppermint stick cinia, which is very yellow and red. I thought it was gonna be more white, but I think this plant just obviously, it got really stressed. I've had to put sticks everywhere for the bandicoots to not dig everything up. And I do have a red one here too. So other than that, we've got some more kale and um, silver beet, lots of pak choy that we have been eating, kohlrabi, and then I have some stock down here that has just started to flower. This is going to be so fragrant when it blooms a little bit more than it is now. Uh, and these are all just dwarf stock. So I think it'll look, so I think it'll look really cute in this area because I actually have so many more flowers planted around here. And then moving on to this bed over here, this is where I have uh, another patch of cosmos that is just absolutely beautiful right now. Next to my bay tree, this is where I planted those anem anemones. I think in the video I kept on saying anemone, but it 
it's anemone <laughs> with an M and they've actually started popping up. I could see a few popping up, but I don't want to disturb them too much more than I already have. Um, so here we've got some ruby red basil next to the blue dwarf kale and the cosmos. And doesn't that just look so pretty all layered up there? This basil is just so, so pretty. I've been kind of experimenting on whether I like it or not. And I am definitely gonna grow this again just because of how beautiful it is. It smells exactly like the other basil, um, just a little bit more stronger in uh, scent, I think. Um, and I am so excited to plant this all around the garden. Basil's a really great deterrent for a lot of different bugs and it confuses bugs because it has such a strong scent. So that's why I like to plant it really close to other plants uh, and flowers to incorporate all of the pollinators into the garden and create like a little mini ecosystem in this area. I also have some tatsoi planted here and a little patch of calendula, um, some more zinnias. In here I have my mizuna, which is ever so beautiful with its purple and green frilly leaves. And then all in here is where I'm going to be planting my ranunculus, um, but they're all going to go in here in like a beautiful little drift and fill up this whole area with gorgeous flowers. I have some more stock and collards down there with some lavender. And then on this side is where I have those boxes that I planted some flowers in. My grevillea down here is getting some flowers which is really beautiful and making sure that you have flowers of different sizes and textures and colors is always a good idea in the garden because you're more likely to um, encourage different pollinators of different sizes and a lot of native pollinators as well who like native species uh, and they're all going to help work together to manage bugs and pests in your garden. Then next to those I've got my tatsoi and pak choy and my box of flowers. I've got lemon basil there, some everlasting daisies that were a little bit of a experiment to see whether I could grow them uh, towards more autumn and winter and so far they're doing pretty well. And then this is what the box is looking like at the moment. You can see the ranunculus are growing nicely. I might actually have to, to move this one. I don't know how much space they're going to need. Let me know if you think this is too close and I might move them. But all of those grape hyacinths that I planted in another video are popping up all around here. This is going to be really pretty. Then the natives are also doing really well. So I have two woolly bushes on either side over there. And I think it was a silver mist malaleuca in the middle. And that's really been loving all of this rain. Then I have my kohlrabi and more tatsoi. Um, I just love growing tatsoi because of how beautiful it is. <laughs> It's really, really pretty to have in the garden. And the kohlrabi is actually starting to get its little alien bodies. <laughs> um, both the purple and the green are doing really well. And then on the other side, we've got my lavender. I've planted a little bit of linaria in there, chrysanthemums. I have a little borage seedling down there. It's quite hard to see. And then my uh, coastal rosemary. This was also from Jeff at Whitbird Environmental. And I can see that it's actually starting to flower, which is so pretty. I really, really love these plants. These grow so well in our native environment around the South Coast. So I would definitely 100% recommend these for cottage gardens. If you live in the South Coast region or even around Brisbane, there's varieties that grow. Pretty much a lot of Australia has some really beautiful uh, coastal species that are very cute in the garden. So that is what this little patch is looking like at the moment. I will take you down now and we can walk down to the other garden, which is my market style garden. Um, I have some really exciting things actually happening down here and I've been sharing that over on my Patreon page, what my uh, complete plans are for down here. And if you're interested in that down there as well as just seeing a lot more behind the scenes of these videos, including like doing a lot of garden beds that I don't include in that garden and the um, other market style garden, 
I include a lot more information over there on my Patreon page and other different garden vlogs of what I get up to here. So this is what is happening down at the back here. All of our garden beds are being slowly planted out and put together. We are expanding massively in this whole space. But again, what I have down here is getting a little bit destroyed by uh, caterpillars and the bandicoot is actually the main problem. So you'll know this is where I planted all those carrot seeds. I, was, I had really high hopes for that, but the bandicoot had other ideas and it's pretty much dug up the whole entire area. So I'm going to have to unfortunately re-sow those seeds, which is not what I want to do. Um, but I'm going to have to re-sow and then put some wire or something over it to make sure that it doesn't get in and dig it all up again. But some of the other plants are doing quite well, like the broccoli here is doing a little bit better. And we've got a cabbage down there and then our onions also are doing really well, but they just keep on getting dug up over there. So I just have to keep like replanting them and making sure to wash my hands afterwards because I don't know if I'm touching bandicoot poo. And then all of this is going to be another very special project that I will reveal soon what that is. <laughs> so it's definitely a little bit slower down at uh, this end of the house and that's just because it's also just so muddy uh, and it's just been way too wet to do too much in the garden so right next to the house I can kind of like run out um, and come back in when the rain stops and do a few things in the garden but down here it's a little bit hard and that's why my and that's why all of my greens and my herbs are up close to the house where I can literally just run outside uh, and run back in if I need to. So that's pretty much all of this area. I will walk back up to the house and share with you uh, what I have in my seed raising trays at the moment. So this is very much real life, very messy area where I have my uh, seed raising area. <laughs> but this is all of those broad beans that I sowed in a recent video and that I'm going to plant out into that garden bed. They're looking really nice and healthy and ready to go in the ground. We're just gonna ignore this because this is broccoli that just didn't make it, didn't have enough time and the rain just didn't let me plant it. So just ignore that one. I've got some little lettuce seedlings and then an egg carton back here that I'm going to plant out and some more cos lettuce and calendula here. I also have a tray of, what are these? Shirley poppy mix, um, some carnations to plant out and I've got some uh, I think these native indigos, something just ate my all of my delphiniums, literally all of them. So that's kind of a problem. I have some native, what is this, uh, swamp paper bark here, another little malaluca, ballerina poppy mix, and then down here I also really need to plant some pansies, which are looking very sad, but they'll bounce back, and some oregano that we picked up. The other day to kind of complete all of the herbs that we would like in the garden and I also have a tray of the ranunculus that I was pre-sprouting that I'm going to be hopefully planting this weekend. I've also sown some billy buttons, some eryngium that I just sowed just yesterday so none of these popping up, um, achillea and there was one more thing that I planted it was fever for you. <laughs> uh, and I also have some trays of snapdragons and aquilegia. So that is all of the seeds and the seedlings that I have. I'd like to get some more flowers sown this weekend that last over the winter or cooler season. But yeah, it's definitely busy in the garden, even though we're coming into the cooler months here. I've also planted a stack of bulbs all around the uh, garden, all around the whole property. So hopefully we're going to have some gorgeous bulbs come up in spring. And I'm also definitely going to be doing a video on planting some bulbs in pots as well. I really want to get onto that this weekend if I can, um, because it's definitely time to get all of the tulips in the ground. Usually you start to plant tulips around Mother's Day and that's what I'm going to be doing because we're still just getting really warm days here, but it's definitely going to cool down soon and that's what tulips like. 
so I think I'm going to leave this video here I really hope you enjoyed seeing everything that is growing in my garden right now and I hope that you are having a productive April in the garden or just enjoying everything that you have already in your garden or if you're starting a new garden there are so many jobs that you can start to do this weekend to create your dream garden so thank you so much for watching this video i hope you're having a lovely day wherever you are in the world and until my next one happy gardening everyone bye